Esau didn't understand. Even though he had heard the stories of his forefathers, he lacked the understanding that even in his desperate situation, the Lord was able to make a way. Right. But to him, all that matters was all that mattered was the grumbling of his stomach. All that mattered to him was the fact that he was hungry and he thought he was going to die. And because of that, Jacob, the underdog, Jacob, the, the weakling, so to speak, Jacob, the younger brother, sees the opportunity to, to purchase that which was given to his older brother. Right. He sees the opportunity to become the seed through whom all nations would be blessed. My God. And so we see the continuation of the line. We see how it, uh, Jacob, as he, after he wrestled with the angel, his name was changed to Israel, which means prince of God. And we see the, the 12 tribes of Israel and how they came forth out of his loins. And we see how they multiplied and, and went down into Egypt with Joseph first leading the pack. And even though it seemed like another desperate situation, the Lord used that situation which his brothers meant for evil to bring good to the whole family. For there was a famine that came around in the land where Jacob and his sons were. Right. And so they went down to Egypt where Joseph was. And Joseph at this point, 13 years later, after he been sold into slavery by his brothers, Joseph had been promoted to the second in command. Right. Now think about that for a second because that in itself is something awesome. Here, Joseph, and if you know anything about the story of Joseph, throughout every situation, every trial, every stumbling block that came in his life, he was faithful to look to the Lord. Right. He was faithful to, to wait on the Lord and see what the Lord would have him to do for it. He had an understanding, even, even though he started off a little zealous, when you, you see him as a young boy telling his, his brothers about the vision that he had about them bowing down to them, and they couldn't understand. For sometimes even people who are closest to you can't quite understand that which the Lord has called you for. They right. just can't quite understand it. Right. But even in his zealousness, as he grew a little older, he began to wait on the Lord, and even in the midst of his trial when he was... Uh, in Potiphar's house and accused by Potiphar's wife and thrown into prison. In every situation, he did the best that he could with what he had. And because of that, the Lord honored him and the Lord promoted him to become second in command in Egypt. Now you tell me, how is it that this little young Hebrew boy could come and to be second in command in Egypt with no formal training in terms of the way of the Egyptians, no formal education, and he wasn't born into this right in order to be uh, in the leadership of Egypt, but because of the struggles that he endured and because of his faithfulness and his reliance on the Lord throughout all of these struggles, he was promoted and second in command into Egypt. And that which his brothers meant for evil, the Lord used for good, the Lord used to be benefit his entire family. We see as the, as the story goes on, as the Lord is continuing to remind the children of uh, Israel what he's done for them. For this is the Lord speaking and reminding them of the great exploits that he's done on their behalf. And we're going somewhere with this this morning. We see that after spending years in Egypt, after Joseph has passed off the scene, we see a, a Pharaoh who rose up that didn't know Joseph, but all he saw were that these Israelites, these children of Israel who were not Egyptian, they saw that they were multiplying and, and, and becoming strong, waxing great. And so they put him into slavery, and the cry of the Israelites rose up before the Lord. And so the Lord sent Moses and Aaron and plagued Egypt. And we heard, um, no doubt most of us have heard the stories of the tech plagues and the miraculous things that the Lord had done in the midst of that to bring his people out of Egypt and out of bondage. The Lord brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and brought them to the Red Sea. And again, another situation that seemed impossible to overcome for the Red Sea was before them and Pharaoh and his armies were behind them. It seemed like they were stuck between a rock and a hard place and there was nowhere to go forward. They couldn't go forward on their own because they'd end up in the sea and they couldn't go backwards for death was eminent. And it was eminent they would return to uh, enslavement and bondage. But just when it seemed that there was no way the Lord made a way. If you understand nothing this morning, understand that the God that we serve is a way maker. Even in the midst of your trial, even in the midst of your situation that seems absolutely impossible, it seems like there is no resolution, God is able to make a way. And sometimes we need to take a trip down memory lane and remember some of the things that the Lord has done in our lives. Sometimes we need to take a look back and remember what it is that the Lord has done, what he's brought us out of what situations he's delivered us from. 
to remember that he indeed is a way maker. Yeah. Right, right. And so with Pharaoh and his armies encroaching on the children of Israel, the Lord parted the Red Sea. But one thing I want you to understand about the Lord is he is a God of details as well. Yeah. For those children of Israel walked through the Red Sea on dry land. Right on dry land. In other words, no mud to stick to their shoes or nothing of the, the sea. Because if you think about the sea, you know, there's so many uh, organisms and, and little creatures and things that live at the bottom of the sea. But yet the Lord parted the way so that they walked through on dry land. I don't know about you, but that's an amazing God that he takes care of even of the most minute details. Even the, the, the smallest details that we can't even fathom. The Lord already knows and makes provision for it. That's right. The Bible goes on to say in verse 7, And when they cried unto the Lord, yes, yes. He put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them, and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt. And he dwelt in the wilderness a long season. In other words, when the children of Israel found themselves in a desperate situation, when they found themselves in a place where they could do nothing else, they cried unto the Lord. Right. See, when you cry, My God. it makes a statement. That's right. When you cry, it's an admonition. Of course, there are different types of cries. Any parent knows there's a cry of children that's seeking attention, where they just want someone to uh, to come and to see about them. Have you ever seen children on the playground when they've fallen, scraping, uh, scrape their knee, they kind of look around to see if anyone's there, and if they catch anyone's attention, they there the tears come. Why? Because they want that attention, even though they're not really hurt, even though they're not really injured. They want someone to come baby them. They want someone to to pay attention to them. Right. But there's also that sincere cry. There's also that sincere declaration when you hear that cry. And any parent knows that there's something different about that sincere cry. For when a child's in trouble, when a child is desperately in need, there's a cry that comes from their depths that just moves a parent to go to where that child is and to provide whatever it is that they need. Right. There's a desperation in that cry that moves the heart of any parent right. to know that there's a need that, you know what, I need to drop everything else that I'm doing right now and see to my child. Right. There's a desperation that comes with that sincere cry when you know that there's a problem that needs to be solved. The Lord, our faithful Father, right. is respondent to our desperate cry. That's right. For it's true that there are cries that we ourselves give up every once in a while when we, the Lord commands us to do certain things. We have our own whiny cry when we say, Lord, I don't want to do this. And we complain and we go back and forth and we, we, we struggle. We cry because we don't want to do that which the right. Lord has commanded us to do. Amen. You know, oftentimes we're a lot like children in our behavior before the Lord. And sometimes I wonder if the Lord doesn't just chuckle and shake his head at us sometimes. Because, uh, you know, as, as much as we think we've matured and grown, a lot of times when it comes to the spiritual walk, we are just like children. And we whine and complain because we want attention in our situation. Even though we're not necessarily hurt, we, we feel that our struggle is too much. And so we want some attention. We want to be delivered from our situation. We want the Lord to come see about us. Right. Not recognizing that our trial has come to make us stronger. And sometimes those are the cries that the Lord doesn't always respond to. Why? Because he knows that the situation is there for a purpose. Right. For if Israel was not at that desperate point where they had nowhere else to go, how would they know that God was able to deliver them? That's right. If we ourselves had never been in desperate situations, how could we know that God is able to deliver us? If you've never had sickness wreck your body where the doctor said that there was nothing they could find and nothing they could do, how could you know that God is able to be your healer? If you've never been in a situation where the bills were piling up and your income was, was next to nothing, how could you know that God is your provider? If you're ever in a situation where you just felt so broken and so alone and so desperate, how could you know that God is a healer of the broken heart and it is your comforter? For if you are in a desperate situation, a desperate cry resonates from the belly of wow. the very depths of your soul and that desperate cry your God responds to, that desperate cry that comes up from way deep inside, the Lord hears and he figuratively drops everything to come and see because he knows that there is a need, he knows that there is a desperate situation. Sometimes we need to start to cry out for the Lord to the depths of our souls and say, Lord, 